everybody and welcome to this amazing game of Dead by Daylight. Yes, it's me again, Mel, and today I'm going to take us through the newly released cosmetics. The Dead by Daylight developers teased a small surprise for April 22nd, which turned out to be a cosmetic reveal for the mid-chapter patch. In the forum post, they announced that this is going to be a recurring feature, so we'll have these to look forward to in the future instead of digging through the game files or waiting for someone else to dig through them and post the skins on Reddit. It has also been announced that there will be a Blood Point event in early May. There's no date revealed at this time, but we do have that to look forward to at some point. With that being said, let's get on and look at the skins. The first collection shown is for Neo Carlson and the Legion. It's titled Neon Knights. These fluorescent clothes are sure to brighten your game up and draw plenty of attention to you. Nia will receive the modern rebel outfit, giving her short pink neon hair, a turquoise and black tracksuit with a matching neon pink stripe down the side of it. The Legion will receive the high vis horror outfit, which is grey and black with neon turquoise stripes and X's all over it. It's worth noting that this is the first cosmetic set that the Legion has received since their release, and it answers some questions that players have had about the Legion cosmetics going forward. Instead of an outfit for each member of the Legion, it seems like we will only receive one, which seems here to be based around Joe's character when we look at the long mask and the knife style, compared to Joe's existing cosmetic. Another character getting their first additional cosmetic since release is Jane Romero, who will be receiving an arts and craft themed outfit. Jane's Weekend Maker outfit is a standalone set in which Jane sports a messy bun, some old baggy clothing with paint splattered all over, and a cute apron tied around her waist. The Disparate Arts collection gives cosmetics to both Adam Francis and the Clown. However, unlike most other collections, the two outfits seem to be quite unrelated at first glance. Adam's Sightseer outfit gives him slightly longer hair than we see in his base model, some yellow tinted sunglasses, jeans, a jacket, a t-shirt, and a camera strung over his shoulder, just like a true tourist. In contrast to this, we then have the clown's Punchinella outfit. Personally, when I first saw this cosmetic, it reminded me of Punch and Judy shows. These are puppetry shows presented normally to children with high slapstick content and are normally found in seaside towns in England. With that being said, the Punchinella is actually a classical character that originated in the 17th century in Italy and became a staple character in Italian puppetry. If we look at images of a traditional Punchinella, then it definitely seems that the clown has the right body type to pull off this cosmetic. For me, I think that this clown cosmetic is the best one revealed today by the devs. I really like the style of it, it looks very creepy, I like the knife, and I think they just did a really good job. The only real link here I could use to tie these two pieces together, resulting in them being a collection as opposed to two standalone cosmetic outfits, would be from the name of the collection, The Disparate Arts. Photography is an art, and we see Adam here with a camera, and performing is also an art, and the clown is dressed up like the Punchinella. I also must say that I'm quite disappointed in the Adam Francis outfit. I mean, it's cool and all, I like the camera, but it seems very similar to the existing modern clothing style that he has in-game already. The next set we have is the Threadbare 30s, in which we have Jake Park and David King both showing a little bit more skin than normal. It's not quite shirtless David, but there's a little bit. Jake will receive the Prospector outfit. He is seen wearing a cap, a vest, some pants, and he also has an oil lantern and some ropes wrapped around him. I don't really have too much to say about this skin, it looks very plain and dull to me, and it's nowhere near as good as the cowboy skin we already have for Jake. David King will receive the mechanic outfit. Here he has slicked back hair, a pencil moustache, work pants, gloves, and a shirt that's unbuttoned. I guess this cosmetic is for those people who want to add a little bit more class to their shirtless David King. I'm not going to try to go into much more detail on these outfits as I know very little of American history and I certainly don't know enough about the time period that these pieces are based on. Um, that's probably shown in the fact that I first thought that these were Victorian cosmetics because I think that Jake looks like a street urchin here. Um, they're okay, I can see a lot of people sporting the shirtless David combo in place of the full frontal bare chest. And finally, to wrap the cosmetic reveal up, we have the spirit wearing a tattered tradition outfit, giving us a lovely smile here in this picture. She's wearing a gorgeous red kimono with a blue sash tied at the back, and I do think that we can see the slightest hint of a flower in that unruly head of hair of hers. Perhaps another hairpiece here, I'm not entirely sure. 
She has a rather large blood splatter on her face, but otherwise she's looking pretty good. So that just about wraps up this cosmetic reveal for Dead by Daylight. Don't forget that the PTB will be releasing tomorrow on April 23rd, and we'll be able to test a bunch of new features here. The new Legion changes, the endgame changes, and as well we'll be able to see these wonderful cosmetics. So what was your favourite cosmetic that you saw today? Are you excited for the PTB? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, good game.